Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and today we're going to look at the Lorenz curve. I will create a variety of videos where we will practice graphing and sketching the Lorenz curve based on text, based on data, and so on. The Lorenz curve was created by Max Otto Lorenz, an American economist. He created this concept in the early 1900s. And graphically, it is, a, it is essentially a square and we're measuring the cumulative percentage of the population on the x-axis, which we can divide into groups of 10 or five deciles or quintiles. And on the y-axis, we're measuring the cumulative percentage of income or wealth. The Lorenz curve can either illustrate the distribution of income or it can illustrate the distribution of wealth. This video will focus on the distribution of income. A great video to um, understand the concepts behind the Lorenz curve is this one here. I will provide a link in the video notes below. It's a video that I use every year to introduce the Lorenz curve to my students. It's also great for theory of knowledge, TOK, because it illustrates the perception of the distribution of wealth in the United States versus the reality of the distribution of wealth in the United States. Now this video is focused on wealth, not income. In any case, I would definitely check this out. And in the video on the x-axis, they are dividing the US population to groups of 10, or what we call deciles. The bottom 10% or the poorest 10%, the next poorest 10%, and so on. We will use quintiles, the bottom 20%, the next 20%, and so on. We will do a paper three type of um, exam question where we are given data and we will plot the points from that data to draw the Lorenz curve. I've pulled it from this website for the United States. So we're going to illustrate the Lorenz curve for 1970 versus 2021. In another video, we will then go over the Gini coefficient, which was created by Corrado Gini, an Italian statistician, but that will be the topic for another video. So on a paper three, type of exam for HL students. They may give they may be given a table of data. So here we have uh, income data, not wealth, income for different quintiles. Quintiles are groups of five. So we're dividing the population into groups of five, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. For the US population in 1970 versus 2021. So we'll see over time whether income distribution is improving or not. In the left column, we see the poorest 20%, the next poorest 20%, the middle 20%, the highest 20%, and the highest income uh, group 20% in the United States. We can already see by looking at the data, in terms of the percent of total income, in 1970, it was 4.1. 2021, that group has fallen to 2.9. So income distribution is getting worse for that quintile. We can see that's the case for all quintiles. The second 20%, it fell from 10.8 to 8%, also income distribution getting worse. The next 20%, 17.4 to 13.9, getting worse yet again for the middle class. The highest, uh, the, the fourth um, highest quintile, 24.5, falling to 22.6. So in all cases, we see for the lowest, second lowest, third, and fourth quintiles, income distribution has worsened over a 40-year period. Whereas the highest 20%, it's increased from 43.3% to 52.7%. So that is a concerning problem for this nation, for the US, that needs to be addressed before it continues to worsen and worsen and worsen, widening that gap between rich and poor, which has the potential to create greater social tension and conflict between the classes. The question is asking us to use income distribution from the data and to construct a fully labeled Lorenz diagram for these two years. Okay, great. So let's um, highlight a couple things. We're focusing uh, in this video on income. And income is generated from the following. It's generated from the factors of production that are owned by household. Which includes number one, labor, number two, land, 
Number three, capital. Number four, entrepreneurship. So this is important that you know in microeconomics, macroeconomics, development economics, that income is generated from the ownership of the four factors of production. Labor generates a form of income that we call a wage. Land generates a form of income that we call rent. Capital generates a form of income that we call interest. And entrepreneurship generates a form of income that we call profit. All right, so these are the four types of income that's being measured through the Lorenz curve and its distribution. So these are the types of income that we're addressing, okay? <clears throat> now, uh, when we look at the poorest households, we generally see that they only, want, they only own one factor of production, which is their labor. And if it's low-skilled labor, it generates a low wage. When we look at the wealthiest households, we typically see that they own perhaps all four factors of production. They own labor resources, land resources, capital resources, and they're also an entrepreneur. So they have four different streams of income coming to the household to increase their income. And they can use that income to acquire what we call wealth. But I'll discuss the difference between income and wealth in another video. So that's a little bit of review. Um, now, here we have this graph that's been provided to us on a paper three exam. It's going to be a square. So we're looking at from zero to 100, from zero to 100. So I'm gonna get rid of this area here. This is uh, a grid that's not needed. So essentially the square that we're working with is what we see here in bold. going to uh, bold that so it's clear what we're measuring. Okay. All right. If we want to draw the Lorenz curve, we first got to label the axes, make sure those are labeled. So the x axis is measuring the cumulative percentage of the population, in this case, the US population. So we're looking at the bottom 20%, that 20% added to the next 20%, 40%, that 40% added to the next 20%, 60%, and so on. On the y-axis, it's the cumulative percentage of income, could be wealth, but in this case, we're measuring income, but I've, I, it's been divided into deciles. But we should label that on the test so the evaluator knows that we are aware of what we're measuring. So the y-axis is measuring the cumulative percentage of income. Perfect. Now we need to label the line of perfect income equality. So you should also illustrate this diagonal line. This diagonal line, again, illustrates the line of perfect income equality. So if all income was equally distributed by all members of society, the Lorenz curve would be on this line. The goal is not to be on the line, but it gives us a reference of how close a nation is to that line to illustrate the uh, level of income equality. The farther a nation is from that line, the more unequal the distribution of income in this case. All right, so in this case, uh, again, we're measuring the, the Lorenz curve, graph illustrating income in this, in this example. Other Lorenz curve can measure wealth in a nation. So with this data, there's a few things we need to do before we start applying the points. We need to add these points. So if I'm going to focus on 1970, and let's use the color, I'll use uh, purple. 
Um, the lowest 20%, the poorest 20% has 4.1% of the total income. So here's the lowest 20%. And this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4. So this point is 4.1. So I've labeled that. So I got that. But I have to add 4.1 to 10.8. 4.1 plus 10.8 is 14.9. Okay, so I'm going to look for that. The next 20%, so 20 and 20, that's 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, right around here 14.9 i have plotted that point now i gotta take 14.9 and add it to 17.4 so 14.9 plus 17.4 is 32.3 so the next uh 20 or 20 40 60 look at 60 and i go up to 32 Here's 20, here's 30, 32 approximately, right over there, great. Now I'm gonna take 32.3 plus 24.5, and that's gonna equal 56.8. So 20, 40, 60, 80, going to 80, 80% 80 of the population has 50, 6%, 50, 52, 54, 56, almost 57%. Great. So I've I've uh, plotted those points and I'm essentially done. Then I can also see that 56.8 <clears throat> plus 43.3 equals 100.1. All right, it should be 100, but it works out to that. I'm done. I can plot those points. So let me go ahead and do that. Here is the Lorenz curve for the United States in 1970. And I'm going to label that curve A. The 1970 curve is this curve A. Great. It's relatively far from the line of perfect income equality, right? But let's see over a 40-year period, 41-year period from 1970 to 1970 to 2021, is it getting better or not? Unfortunately, it's not. So let's go ahead and, and plot that. The lowest 20%, 2.9. So here we have 2, right, that first boxed area. All right, so the poorest 20% of the population, it's getting worse for them in terms of the income they're earning. The next 20%, so I got to take 2.9 plus the 8%, and that's going to equal 10.9%. So the 40% of the population has 10.9, roughly around here. And I'm going to take 10.9 and add that to 13.9, and that gives me 24.8. Eight. So I'm looking at 60% of the population. They have, here's 20, 22, 24, 25 approximately, right around there. Then 24.8 plus 22.6, and that works out to 47.4. Here's 80%, I'm going to 40, 42, 44, 46, 47 approximately two four six seven yeah and then we'll take 47.4 plus 52.7 and that equals 101.1 approximately so we're going to plot those points here we have 2021 income distribution in the united states and unfortunately it's moving away from the line of perfect income equality. So I'll label that curve B. And there'll probably be some questions asking, is income 
distribution getting better or worse? It's getting worse because Lorentz curve A is moving farther away from the line of perfect income equality to curve B. So that is an issue that the U.S. needs to address uh, before it continues to get worse and continues to create greater tension between the great the, the social classes, between the rich and the poor over time. We'll pro I'll provide more examples of this, more practice of this for a variety of different countries where we can see countries where income distribution is getting better, income distribution is getting worse, and perhaps we can delve deeper and try to understand why. If you have any questions, feel free to comment those questions below and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.